like, you know what? <laughs> I do. I do, Meg. You are my nightmare. <laughs> okay, All right, we're starting. Welcome to Decaf, a weekly podcast by the Beacon Center of Tennessee. I'm Taylor. This is Mark. We're back and very close to each other. Very close. <laughs> we're having to use the same microphone and, and not as friends, just physically close. Yeah, listening. we're not friends. Just to be very clear, I don't associate with people <laughs> like Mark. That makes sense. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, okay. Talking about something that you cannot roast me on or should not roast me on. Disney Plus came out this week. Okay. And I don't think I've ever been more excited about anything Did ever you buy in it? my entire life. Well, so I have Verizon Unlimited. PSA, if you have Verizon Unlimited, you get Disney Plus free for a year. For a year? For a That's year. That's a pretty good deal. I can watch all the DCOMs, the Disney Channel original movies. I can watch <laughs> all of them in a D- year. DCOMs? All DCOMs. Disney Channel original movies. It's like Brink and uh, Alley Cat Strike and High like School those. Musical and Gotta Kick It Up. Z- Xenon. Xenon. Xenon Girl of the 21st Century. Yes, Gosh, yes. I thought she was so cool. She was. She I mean, was so we cool. Were she wore slinkies in her hair. That wasn't that was a cool the coolest part. thing. <laughs> but what She's I think is really interesting, cool. yeah, the fact that she lived on a space station. She called her Space Day. Um, what I think is interesting, Ron actually pointed this out to me earlier, is from in some of the older Disney movies, so like Dumbo and Jungle Book, I think is one of them, they actually put a disclaimer on there saying that some of the cultural references are out of date. Oh, wow. So it's yes. like it's like the... You didn't know that? No, no. I didn't, oh, I've, wow. I've, done, I've just seen the Disney Plus thing launching. Oh. So basically it's almost like... What people are saying about Friends and those shows, like if you went back, like, oh, well, this might be a little racist. Like Today, 30 years, it would be they, culturally yeah. insensitive. Some gotcha. Of them, but I think so they it's kept not, it, but they they put a warning. That's what I think is good. I think it's fine that they put a warning on it because I would rather be able to watch Lady and the Tramp and Dumbo and all of those yeah. classic movies without, like, in their true original form, without them editing them to make them more culturally acceptable. I yeah, don't know. Like, like I mean, maybe it's cold think? out, or maybe it's cold outside. Yeah. Or they just like literally change the lyrics to make it terrible, which is what John. Legend did like I at mean, least they I, didn't like edit out like part of the movie. Seriously, like I love John Legend, but I don't. I feel like uh, well, he's an idiot. I I think he's an amazing singer, but great I, singer, great singer. <laughs> but I just thought that was really dumb that he did that. Yeah, I don't get it at all. But like, so nobody actually knows what Disney Plus is. If, oh. if for, for the old people who don't follow. Oh my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> Disney Plus is a new streaming service. Apparently, everyone has their own streaming service these days. Yep. And so it's Disney- like it's like Hulu or Netflix. Yes. Right? So it's Disney's streaming service where they have all the old Disney movies, um, basically the entire Disney vault, as they call it, plus some original series. So there's an original series about Star Wars. There's some National okay. Geographic series. There's a new High School Musical series. Like, there's all kinds oh. of... I saw a meme of like uh, Billy Madison where it's like when Disney Plus comes out, it's him sitting in the classroom with all like the six year olds. Oh my like, gosh. He's like a full grown adult. Literally me. I'm like, how late can I stay up watching Disney movies and still be able to work like and function like a normal person? Well, you obviously stayed up too late because I saw you not functioning all day. Okay, so. honestly, <laughs> sometimes people have clumsy moments and everything's fine. It <laughs> Every has, nothing, day. It has yeah. nothing to do with me not getting sleep. It's just who I am as a person. But, but Disney Plus is a really cool thing. I'm kind of overwhelmed because now I have all of these streaming much. services and I'm trying to decide whether to get Apple but Disney Plus if you're on Verizon you have Verizon Unlimited you don't have to pay for it for a year and that to me is and if you don't the it's, like, it's like I think it's like it's eight bucks a month yeah. or seven bucks a month yeah you don't, it's, so. it's, it's no big deal but it was not working just like Obamacare website. Like, I know for a while it was down yesterday. Well, you just got to give give Disney some grace. I will. Okay. Going to the next one. Speaking of things that aren't working, the Trump impeachment hearing oh, started today. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about Alabama football <laughs> oh, now. So, <laughs> that's next. Nice. Can we not? Um, the Trump impeachment hearing started today. The public hearings. And Twitter is a buzz with it? the things that are going on. I mean, people are saying that, oh, all of you people who are watching Fox News are just being only going to come out thinking that Trump did nothing wrong. Everyone who's watching CNN is only going to come out out thinking that Trump is the worst criminal that America's ever seen. Which like is, people, both of those are true. Both of those <laughs> are true. Um, it's just a hot freaking mess. I don't know how to, uh, I mean, it's one of those things that- I don't even know what to think anymore. Do, do you feel this way? Because I feel like once, I mean, e- ever since Trump's been elected, he said stupid stuff. Totally. But, but it feels like the whole time, it's like, even from the fr- the start of it, it's like people are like, oh, we want him to be impeached. Like within a week of him being elected, because they don't like him. So it's like, maybe, maybe this is something, but to some extent- I'm so I, Desensitized. I've tuned it out because, like, I've heard so many times, and like, e- if there is something there, which I mean, it sounds like there's something. I don't know what it is. I don't is, know what it is. But it's like for all the times that you said, well, um, net neutrality is we should impeach him for that. Tax cuts, we should impeach him for that. It's like everything he's done, whether it's 
has been a quote impeachable offense. Exactly. So like when there is something that may or may not be impeachable, I don't know. I'm not a legal expert. I've seen Napolitano say that he should be, which he's kind of a libertarian oh, wow, guy. Yeah. I've seen a lot of kind of PSing yeah, Dershowitz, who's kind of a Democrat, say he shouldn't be. So I, I don't know, but I know that I'm desensitized because when you cry wolf so many times about he should be everything you don't like, he should be impeached because of. I'm kind of just like at the point like impeach him or not, I don't care. I just never want to hear that freaking word again. And, and think about it. I'm over it. I do feel like if 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 he did do something really wrong, which is possible, and people are desensitized, it is their fault. It's the left's fault because they have done this every time. I know. Like the idea that if you think Trump's racist, or I think he, we can agree he says some racially insensitive things, mm -hmm. you kind of lose your credibility on the left because you're like, oh, well, Romney's racist. Bush is racist. Anybody's a Republican's racist. So at yeah. that point where somebody actually may be racist or at least say racist, racially insensitive things, no one will take Everyone's you seriously. Everyone's like, okay, there they are again. And I'm at We've the point now- We've heard this for, for, for 20 for, years. Yeah. yeah. I'm at the point now where I used to actually Google things and say, what's the truth about blank? And I'm just at the point where I don't even do that anymore. And I know that's really bad because we're the people who are- our livelihoods are in this political world and we should be the ones who really are pursuing the truth. But I just don't even know what to do anymore. I'm so just burnt out and jaded. I guess I'm way too jaded for a 20 something, but I'm there. Well, we're lucky. I mean, at least like we work on state policy. So the, the federal stuff is not as important to us as an organization. It, it's right, it's as an organization, so but at us least, as individuals, yeah. we should be pursuing truth when our, when friends ask us. And I'm just at the point where I'm like, look it up yourself. And there, there, there's, so, there's so many different stories. And like, I just feel like everything's biased one way or the other. Again, either Trump is completely innocent and the greatest president of all time, or like he should be in jail and like he's worse than Hitler. So I it's like, it's like there's, the, no, there's no middle ground. I listen to a podcast Podcast, it was like the same story on impeachment from the New York Times and from the Wall Street Journal, and it was completely different information. Yeah. So what do we even do anymore? Um, I will tell you what you can read. Let me start the timer. I will tell you what you can read and know that it's 100% true, which is Beacon's Pork Report, which is coming out in a oh, couple weeks. Yeah, How about yeah. that transition? Oh, I just yeah, killed was, it on that, those. Well, like a 7 out of 10. Okay, I give it a 10 out of 10, please. <laughs> well, obviously, you I'm perfect in every way. <laughs> obviously, with your costume, you have I'm perfect a in every scale. way. <laughs> but um, our Pork Report is coming out soon, and if you want to really dig into um, abuse of – a government position or waste of taxpayer money. Um, we've done that already for you. And it will be delivered on, what's the date? December that 11th. December 11th, guys. So, um, so, and like there is probably people here who are watching or listening who don't know the pork report yeah, is. Yeah, let's so, hear it, Mark. So what we do is every year, I think this is actually our 14th uh, iteration of it. Yeah. Also, are you impressed I knew the word iteration? Yeah, I know. I, am. I, I, I know. I'm very Good smart. vocab <laughs> yeah, yeah. today. <laughs> Trying my best. Um, <laughs> but it's our 14th version of the Pork Report, which we do each year. And we kind of change it every year yeah. on how we do it. But it's supposed to show the waste, fraud, and abuse in the state of Tennessee this yeah. year. And we did the top 25 examples. This is the first time we said, okay, we're going to limit to 25. And Because like, there could be hundreds. There is hundreds. I mean, I'm sure there's hundreds. Yeah, I mean, we, so we probably had a list of hundreds that we had to bring it down yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. So, and, and what we do is like, we, we kind of write these entries in a snarky way. Mm -hmm. We're like, we try to have fun with it, but at the same time, so people can read it like, okay, that's funny. But at the same time, realize, okay, well, just because they're making light of it, like, it is still a serious problem. So we wanted to kind of expose this so mm -hmm. some of the government agencies and bureaucrats change their ways, but it's also a funny way for people who follow us to be like, okay, well, this is actually a way to ingest news well, I mean, or ways that's not like depressing. When you're seeing how much money the state is spending on stupid things or how much we're being defrauded out of in our tax money, if you don't, sometimes if you don't laugh, you'll cry. So <laughs> that's kind of how I view the pork report is we got to laugh about it or else we're all going to be sitting here doom and gloom and crying about it. And we had one fraudulent case which we can't go into, but like we had a lot of internal discussion what we could write and what we could not write. Guys, it was <laughs> <laughs> I just need everyone to know that you when you when the pork report comes out, you need to go look for it. You need to look for Mark's in No, 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 but the thing is they deleted most of the funny stuff. Okay. When I read it, my cheeks were redder than my shirt is right now. It was he I, I don't even have words for I, her. I, I, and I, I wish that you had not used the words that you had used. They were funny, though. I tried to be clever. But, okay, so basically what we ended up settling on, which we can't say what we originally said, but we ended up settling on um, basically weird sexual things we don't want to talk about. That, 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 that's what the final thing and was. And your taxpayer money was spent on these things. Yes, so I won't go into stuff. detail, but buckle up when you read that entry. It's not for the children's no, eyes. No, well, and I had, a great, <laughs> I had just a, such a good pun, but Justin, who is a much more responsible person than me, said, yes. 
us. Yeah, we can't put that in our pork report. But that we, just we, gives we, you that just gives you a clue of like how much fun we have writing these entries we because we look at all of these things and we think, how on earth is someone getting away with this? And we write about it, but it's a serious topic that's packaged in a really funny um, presentation, and I'm really excited to release it this year because it's the first one that I've really gotten to write a lot in. That's right. And before we go, shout out to Lauren, our graphic designer. She just had a child. Yes, um, and she's amazing. She's a great, and like she came back from having the kid right after her maternity leave and finished this report in like a week. So Lauren Crownover, you're our hero. Yes. Crownover Creative. Go yes, there. Yes, she's the best, and we can't wait for y'all to see the pork report. We'll remind you the week that it comes out. Yep. Okay, here's something that I, I don't. This is my, I'm so excited. Mark wants to talk about this. I had a hard weekend this past weekend. Um, the Alabama Crimson Tide, we didn't do our best. No, you didn't do anybody's best. And we, um, we fell to the Tigers, the LSU Tigers, and I just really, and to add insult to injury, Georgia, who lost to South Carolina this season, is now one place ahead of us in the college football rankings, and I am ticked. So let's explain kind of what happens if you don't follow football. So basically the top four college football teams make the playoffs. So if you make And the playoffs, Alabama has made the playoffs every year since the playoffs Yeah, they have. That's right. And as of right now, because of Alabama's embarrassing loss um, at home, they are in fifth place. Thank so that, you for that great no, no, adjective. I, I want to make... See, I, adjectives, I'm so good at them today. I'm but, being sarcastic. <laughs> I know. But Alabama is fifth right now. Um, so it means as of this point that they would... I'm so triggered. Yeah, they would not be in the playoffs. Now... There's an argument, because I think this is for people who watch SEC football, there's a fair argument to be made that maybe Alabama should be ahead of Georgia. Because Ge Georgia has a worse loss than Alabama does. They, they both have the same record, and Georgia has, they've lost to a worse team, but they have two top 15 wins. So, but, and, and the win against Notre Dame is actually we valuable. We lost by five points to the number two, which is now the number one yes. team. But you have no wins in the top 25. So that, that just kind of goes to the idea of, do people value good wins or do they value good losses? And, th and that's kind of where it goes. So they both have a loss at the same record. And the committee basically said, we value good wins over um, a good loss. Now, with that being said- I'm so triggered right we, we now. Can but Keep we can, talking. Well, yeah, we can argue, does Alabama or Georgia deserve to be there? The fact is that neither team deserves to be there. <gasps> it should be Minnesota at number four, the only undefeated team. They beat number four, Penn State, last week. And then Baylor should be five, who's also undefeated. And then we can talk about the Alabama, Georgia, Oregon thing. But If you don't like the South, you can move. I won't oh, be sad. Oh, no, no, you will not be sad. But I mean, I just <laughs> I like good football, so I'm not as into the South as you might be. But look, the SEC has this reputation of being the best conference because I guess in like 2013. Because we are. Nope. In two, I mean, I think losing record in bowl games last three years. But, Launch it. But the thing is that they have this reputation because they were at one time the best. And Alabama has been among the best teams in the Dynasty, country baby. for the last 10 years. Sure. But it's been Alabama has carried that conference. And now that they're not the best team in the conference anymore, um, I think we have to say like, okay, maybe the SEC is not as good as we think. Minnesota is undefeated. They have not lost a the game. They play in a real conference, the Big Ten. Who, <gasps> You're saying the SEC? SEC is a real conference. Watch it. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm saying, I'm just saying that, no, I'm not criticizing that. I'm saying okay. like compared to like a team from like a crappy okay, conference. Okay, okay, okay. So they're undefeated in a real conference, not like the whatever, Sun Belt. So who do you want to see in the playoffs? I want Minnesota. Minnesota just beat the number four team in the country. They're undefeated. As of now, I'm not saying the best team. They should be number four. Didn't their coach or someone like crowd surf in the locker yeah, room? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's so cool. That was so cute. He's so cool. All right, like, I'll give it to him. That was really cute. Dude, well, that, that doesn't mean they should be number four because he's kind of cute. But. Listen, you're not going to convince me that Alabama shouldn't be number one you in everything like facts. always. I get, I get so, it. like, I prefer my opinion over fact. My my mind is a happy place. I respect I respect Everything the is there. right there. So, anyway. It's not um, a happy place around you, but your, your mind's a happy place. Anyway, I really, um, I was about to say that I've missed getting to host with Mark the last couple of times, but I will take that back before I even say it <laughs> well, because I'm smart. bullied. So ahead. anyway, um, thanks for listening. Stay tuned for the Pork Report. Oh, we have Real a gas. Quick, Monday. Overcaffeinated. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. Monday, we are doing, um, we are filming an episode of Overcaffeinated with Matthew Charles. If you're not familiar with him, he was the first person released under Trump's First Step Act, which is, um, which was sweeping and massively huge um, accomplishment on criminal justice reform that has allowed so many people to walk free and come back into society and contribute to society. It was just a landmark piece of, of legislation on the national level. And Matthew Charles is from Tennessee. He lives here. 
He's going to be in our office talking with Mark and Justin about criminal justice reform. And I'm so excited. Stuff, yeah. And football and music and all kinds of stuff. So we're really excited to host him on Monday. Um, be sure to keep an eye on our Facebook page for when that comes out. And other than that... It's going to be weird if I touch his beard. He has like the most perfect beard I've ever seen. I think that we need to go ahead now while everyone's watching mm-hmm. and say, do not touch the man's beard. We'll see what happens. I'm going to at least At say least something. ask for yeah, permission. Yeah, 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 of course. Just <laughs> ask for permission. Don't just walk up and... I'd rather ask for forgiveness after I touch his beard. It's, okay. it's, it's, just, it's a beautiful beard, though. It's like one of the best looking beards I've ever Matthew, seen. Matthew, if you're listening, I should <laughs> probably sorry. text him after this and tell him to watch out, like yeah. dodge. But... I might be able to go within 500 feet of him by the time this. I'm going to be hosting <laughs> from over there. It's going to be an issue. We're going to have so many formal complaints, which means that I'll get to host over caffeinated, which lose, don't lose, hate lose that. Anyway, <laughs> on that great idea and that great note, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.